Greetings and welcome to Once Upon a Pipe. Today is going to be a very, very special session, so I invite you to get comfortable, grab your coffee. Uh, you can pause the video, get settled down, come back and join me, because today I have a very, very special guest. We are in Nicholasville, Kentucky. He stopped by the office, and I want to introduce you to a man who can make things happen and has made things happen. You always hear about the people behind the scenes. You never see their face, and sometimes you don't even know their name. But what we do know is that things could not happen without them. Today, I have joining me all the way from Georgia, Mr. Barry Benton. Thank you for taking the time, you and your lovely wife. She's here with us right off to the side there watching us. And uh, thank you for taking time to come out and, and visit us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background in this movie that has come out called Hacksaw Ridge? Yes, uh, this is really personal to me. Uh, my dad was in the Marine Division and was wounded on Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, he was in the 6th the sixth Marine Division. And uh, Desmond Doss, who is the uh, hero in uh, Hacksaw Ridge, uh, was in the... Uh, uh, 90, uh, the 77th uh, Army Division, he was a medic, and he was unusual in that he uh, did not carry a weapon. He was a uh, combat medic, uh, and he called himself a conscientious cooperator uh, because he wanted to be there. And what about his faith? How did his faith affect his decision to uh, get involved in the war in the beginning and then... Um, even later on, all of his actions throughout the war, not carrying a weapon and not taking a, a human life. Well, he had an exemption at the beginning of the Second World War because he worked in uh, a shipbuilding uh, entity, but uh, he felt like that he as a Christian uh, and as a God-fearing person should participate in his community. And even though he believed the Sixth Commandment says, thou shall not kill, uh, he but he, he volunteered, and uh, when he volunteered, he did not want to be put in just a medic unit. He wanted to be actually a part of the infantry, and so that's that's how he started, although the people around him, his fellow soldiers, thought that it is a conscientious objective. That was his classification, 1AO. Uh, that, uh, that didn't have a good smell to it in the, 19, uh, the early 1940s. This is really incredible because... Desmond Doss, the story of his of his faith and the actions and what he did, as um, detailed in the movie Hacksaw Ridge, it really wasn't known to us or to the public. Not very many people knew, anyways. But um, somehow, someone got an idea to put this on the screen and said, "Let's tell the people about this. Let's make this a movie." Um, how did all of that come about and, and where did that originate, that idea to put this on the big screen and, and show this to, them, to the people? Well, it had been an idea that uh, had been long coming. Where I got involved was uh, I had never heard of Desmond Doss. And one day I got a call from one of my friends and said, uh, Barry, you're needed at Desmond Doss's house. Just stop what you're doing, go up to Lookout Mountain and uh, into De Desmond's home. There's a producer from Hollywood that wants to buy the story rights uh, to his uh, story. And when I went there to meet with Desmond, Desmond said, you know, I don't want to sell my story to this fellow because he's going to want to make it all Hollywood and glamorized, and that's not what happened. And uh, so I got to, got to know him after that. I became his attorney. I ultimately did a trust for him whereby he gave uh, the story rights uh, to his uh intellectual property uh, to a church entity. And uh, in, tw in 2000, our, our, we had a council. There was 10 of us on the council. There's still nine of us on that council that, were, that knew Desmond personally. And we are the administrators uh, of his rights. The first thing we did was to do a documentary and that was be began in 2000 and finally finished up in 2004. It's an hour and a half documentary. We interviewed the people that were with him and tried to make it as absolutely as realistic and as straightforward and like it was. 
That's really incredible. And considering um, that this has been in the process, the documentary uh, that's out there, and, and that goes a little bit deeper than the movie, doesn't it? The documentary into, into uh, his life. Yes, because we were able to interview the people, some of the people that he had saved. We interviewed the people, his uh, company commander, for example, and the enlisted men that with, within the company where he worked. Uh, and then in 2000, about 2004, shortly after we did the documentary, we sold the rights to a uh, Hollywood entity, uh, and they started working on it. It takes a long time to assemble all the money and the right partners to present the movie, and the movie was basically filmed uh, during, this, during this last year in Australia. For Most of it was filmed in Australia. And uh, they have complied with our, our demands that, uh, or our wishes that, that the movie be as much like his life as we possibly could. And, and I've seen the, the movie three times. And I saw it actually this past June uh, when it was in its beginning phases uh, of putting the, the, the last product together. Uh, so I think you'll find that those of us who've known Desmond says, yes, it's this, the Desmond Doss that really existed, that's what he was like. This movie was a great opportunity to display uh, incredible courage as well as incredible faith. Um, what do you think that, if, that the younger generation... Um, can get the, from that people who have grown up like even my kids they've grown they've seen superheroes created by Hollywood on screen but but Desmond Doss is a real life person and, and I'm sure he doesn't uh, look at himself as a superhero but an ordinary person in an extraordinary circumstance yes well take him physically for example Desmond was about five foot eight or nine he weighed 145 pounds uh, when I knew him, of course, uh, he had uh, he was 100% disabled from the uh, from the from the uh, from his uh, government post, and uh, he had one lung removed, several ribs removed. Uh, he was he was uninjured during the the 24 I mean, the 12 hour period in which he, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Uh, and he saved over 75 people. Uh, he was he had not been injured at all, not much, and. A few weeks after that, he was he got uh, grenade shrapnel in his leg, and then he got shot through the arm by a sniper and broke all three arm major bones in the his arm. Then he had severe tuberculosis, and he spent on and off five months in veterans hospitals after the war. I know uh, from what uh, Bob has told me, you yourself have been in uh, various situations in. And I know that you are a man of faith. How has your faith helped you to go into situations where you needed uh, extraordinary courage to, to come out and get the mission complete? Well, you know, courage is as much anything as is a commitment. Uh, I am an airborne ranger, a special forces qualified uh, soldier, and uh, much of what seems to be courage is, is really a, a personal commitment to doing not only what you're trained to do, but what is the right thing to do. That's a, that's a good word, doing the right thing. And I think, um, especially in a society today where uh, the absolutes of right and wrong have been blurred and sometimes in many lanes, uh, many perspectives, they don't even exist. So uh, finding that definite uh, right, that definite wrong, and dra drawing that line can help be a guiding factor in, in where we position ourselves as a uh, what compass that we use. So uh, what advice would you have to people that are um, aware of Desmond Doss or becoming aware, but they haven't seen the movie yet? Um, is there a book out? Should they read the book first? Should they go see the movie first, then read the book? Um, what would you have for them? Well, we have published uh, two books uh, that are republications of a, of a book called The Unlikeliest Hero. And it's a story that was written in the mid-1960s about the life of Desmond Doss and the author of that book. Also interviewed the survivors and also the, the, uh, the, the uh, enlisted and officer people of uh, uh, Desmond's unit 
So it, it, it's also the truth. And that book uh, is in paperback. We've actually printed 1.1 million and have already sold 950,000 books in the last uh, 60 days. And then we have a hardback book that's, uh, uh, and the paperback is called Hero at Hacksaw Ridge. And the hardback, uh, which is uh, the unabridged version, plus 30 photos, extra photos that were added to the, the, uh, the, the book, is called uh, Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge. And we've just now produced, and are producing right now, eight lessons that come from the, the true events of the Second World War that emphasizes the various parts of Desmond's life. His integrity, for example, his courage, for example, his judgment, for example. And he really was, he lived exactly the way he, uh, he believed. And he wasn't, uh, he was an introvert, not an extrovert. And uh, so he was a very quiet person. And he wasn't the kind of person that grabbed you by the lapel and said, you know, I want you to believe as I do. He never did that. He just was the kind of guy that would do it. And he, when he, he earned the respect of his fellow soldiers when, the, when their first, first battle of his unit was uh, on, uh, in the invasion of Guam. And nobody at night during the Second War moved around. They just didn't move around. And yet there'd be wounded soldiers out that had been wounded during the day. And only Desmond would crawl out there and get better first aid and then drag them back. At 145 pounds, he would drag you back no matter how far out you were. That's really uh, incredible, that type of courage, which builds up the even the physical strength, which doesn't seem possible. Um, even though this is Christmas time and we are talking about a war hero, um, a Medal of Honor recipient, Desmond Doss, uh, I want to tie it in in, in this way. Uh, Minister Benton mentioned unlikely heroes. Well, there was a, another unlikely hero that appeared on the world scene a little over 2,000 years ago, uh, born in a little manger to a very young virgin girl, uh, no place for them to stay, no roof over their heads, not likely that he would survive. Um, a death warrant was issued on his life and uh, consequently uh, the deaths of thousands of baby boys under two years old. And uh, he came and he made a, a difference. He was an unlikely hero. And his time here was short, only about 33 years. He ended up being treated like a criminal, accused of crimes he didn't commit. And then finally, uh, judgment was pronounced on him where he faced the death sentence on a cross and was nailed there and uh, he gave his life. Um, of course, speaking of Jesus. So in this Christmas season, even though we're, we are um, encouraging you to look at the life of Desmond Dawson, some things that you can learn from him, um, also wanna point you to the other unlikely hero, Jesus the Christ. Well, I definitely wanna thank Thank uh, Mr. Benton and his lovely wife, uh, Sandy, for joining us here on this very special edition of Once Upon a Pipe. And I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can post those in the comments. And until then, I hope that you all have a uh, great day. If I don't hear from you, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And this is how it is on Once Upon a Pipe.